Hey guys, it's Monster Monday. It's super late, um, 11 p.m. So, you know, um, pretty much, you know, I had, I've been on and off the dyno probably every other Thursday with my car. And I'm pretty much at the point where I'm not going to get more power out of, out of it on 91. I mean, technically I could get more power, but that's not going to be something you can run at sea level unless you're on like ethanol. So guys, like, um, the tune's pretty much maxed out. Um, and the thing is with, um, you know, being at elevation, there's dyno corrections and, you know, a lot of guys talk about what the correct number is for altitude. Um, and pretty much I kind of want to end the whole dyno debate. So when I got this car, I dynoed it at Mo uh, MoFab, uh, in Parker, Colorado, where I live. And when it was completely stock, it made 154 wheel horsepower with dyno corrections, right? Um, I'll go look at those numbers. I have all these numbers in front of me right now. Uh, and we can, we're going to kind of go through them. Um, but pretty much, I'm, I'm going to grab these all so I can see them. I still have, I'm missing some of my dyno sheets, but I have dyno sheets from um, MoFab and also Speedy Roo Motorsports. So... Let's see, I don't have, when I get to, when I get to MoFab, I'm gonna get the uh, other numbers. But pretty much, um, my highest number when I went to MoFab, uh, it was 154.5 um, for my horsepower. Um, after I did my tune, um, the first tune when I was with Raf, we made 2349 um, horsepower and 218 torque, right? Um, and that was like, you know, at the beginning stages of the tune. And then we kept trying to do stuff to make more power. Um, but really, we were just trying to increase drivability. Um, and after this point, um, we were trying to find more fuel before we start to increase the power more. So the next mod I did was that low pressure fuel pump that I posted about last week, right? So, the car felt better instantly when I put the pump in and we did a couple things to try to make the car drive better and it, it felt more powerful. So I felt like, you know, it was time to return to the dyno a couple months later. So I had did that dyno in November um, when I made that 234.91, almost two, 235 wheel horsepower. So I'll go back there the following March with the fuel pump in and I didn't make any more horsepower, right? Um, I made 231, um, horsepower and 219 foot pounds of torque, almost 220. Right. Um, and this is so pretty much, you know, like you want to keep everything the same. You want to keep the same time of day you're going all this to control variables. Right. Um, when I went to do this dyno that, um, third time, which was my second time supercharged, I had went in the afternoon and, you know, I was really bummed out that I made less horsepower when a car felt more, um, felt more powerful. Uh, but one thing I didn't really take into consideration is that all these dynos, um, they do correction for altitude based on the barometric pressure and the humidity and all this. So my car felt faster and I was like, how did it make less horsepower even though it feels faster and it made more torque than a previous dyno I did? Um, and what I didn't look at was the correction factor. So when I looked at the correction factor for the day that I did um, the 235 versus when I did the 231, the correction factor on the 235, when you look at it, look at it, it was like 1.25 versus when I did the uh, 231, it was a 1.23. So had they both been at the 1.25, it's the same horsepower but I'm making more torque, like, you know, a couple foot pounds of torque more, right? So I was like, I mean, I didn't realize this until now. I didn't, it didn't really click in until I was doing this dyno last week and I wasn't making more power and I didn't understand it. I was like, my car feels so much faster, yet I'm not making more power in the dyno. But the problem was when I was, um, you know, looking at the numbers, I was looking at the corrected numbers, right? And that's always going to change based on, um, you know, the software, determining what the correction is, right? So normally when I'm on that dyno, I get about a 1.3 something correction. 
Um, and, you know, last Thursday when I was on a dyno, I had a 1.2 something correction. So we'll I'll post the different corrections throughout this video so you can see what I'm talking about. So um, let's go from when I left um, MoFab. My first dyno um, after I left MoFab, you know, so I hit that 230, 234.91 and I thought it should have been more after I did that second dyno and I hit 231, but the correction factor was lower, right? So then I go to Speedy Roo. I had a bad run uh, on the dyno, my bypassing closed. So I went back um, the following week, I hit 235. The same number I hit on the um, the dyno jet, which that is an initial dyno and the Mustang dyno we're doing is, um, where I'm using now is a loaded dyno. So it made the same power, which the, is the power I thought it should have made on the other dyno. But also the car was even more powerful than it was when I did that dyno jet run because I started messing with the tuning myself at this point. So I was like, man, I just made the same power I did at that, that dyno jet and my car feels way more powerful. And so I'm just like, okay, maybe the Mustang does read low. Um, so I got to go back and, you know, after this video, because I'm going to go back to MoFab and do this dyno, I got to get the numbers for, I got to get the correction factor for when I did that 235 to match it up with the dyno jets correction factor to see what they're using. But okay, so let's fast forward. So I go to Mo, uh, I go to Speedy Roo. Now I'm tuning my car there, um, thanks to them. And that first dyno, 235, right? Do another one, his two, 233. So it was in that range, you know, 235 to 233 on that same tune that I was hitting 235 to 231 on, depending on the correction factor that day, right? And so then I get better at tuning. I start adding parts on her and intake to try to cheat the system. I get the car up to 250 wheel horsepower um, with the, some tuning and the intake, right? And then, you know, a couple of weeks later, I hit my highest number I ever hit. I hit 257 Point five horsepower on the Mustang Dyno with 242 foot-pounds of torque, right? So that's the highest number I ever hit on the Mustang Dyno. And so I'm like, oh, man, this is awesome. I just want to hit that 260 mark, right? Um, and I'm, you know, I'm just going off the corrected numbers. And then, you know, the following couple of weeks, I go back on the Dyno and I'm hitting two 240 seven two forty six and I can't understand why my car can't hit that two fifty mark that I've hit two weeks previous. Like I hit two fifty, another two weeks later I hit two fifty seven. And I'm like, okay, why am I like at two forty seven now? And I didn't think like I, everything's set up the same. I do I set the everything up the same, the fans and everything. And I didn't even think to look at the correction factor, right? So that day I was hitting 247, my correction factor was, um, you know, 1.2, right? So that's what I'm hitting right now is 247 uh, with the 1.2 something correction factor, right? So that's still, you know, over 10, 12 horsepower than I was getting back when I was at that dyno jet. So my whole goal is without changing the tune, so I know right now I get on a 1.2 something correction like that I was already getting at... Um, MoFab, I'm hitting 246, 247, that range with, you know, um, a 1.2 something correction. But um, yeah, I'm going to go back there and we're going to do a dyno and see if the car makes more power there with relatively the same correction factor. Um, in my head, I think the car is going to make more power because we're on an inertia dyno. The dyno that we're using is loaded at, with the Mustang, and um, I did, you know, some testing, and I tried different timing on, you know, on my car. So, with lower timing or higher timing from what I already had, the car made the same power, which the reason why that's happening is because my car can't reach that timing, so then it backs off. Now, on this inertia dyno, I remember when I was doing my logs on there, the timing would max out because you can you can build momentum on it just like you do on the road. So um, when I go over to MoFab, the difference is going to be there isn't that continuous load on the car. So you're going to see like the true street power. Um, and because I do have some added timing in there, 
it shouldn't read the same like it did on my the, the Mustang Dyna I'm using. Um, when I added that degree to a timing, the power stayed the same, um, which was kind of discouraging. But also, I like that because then, you know, if you go and have passengers in your car and whatnot, you're going to get a, a realistic, tune, safe tune on the Mustang Dyno. Whereas the Inertia Dyno, you're just going for power. So I want to see the difference with this same tune that I ran, I probably did last Thursday. Man, I don't know. I probably did like 10 to 15 runs trying to confuse myself on what's going on, why I can't hit 250 wheel horsepower. But, you know, like I said, I I didn't really look at our um, correction factor that day. And it automatically adjusts on the dyno. So every day that correction factor is going to be different. So I just, you know, I kept doing different tunes. And then finally, um, I settled for that higher timing tune that I had. Um, and I was just like, man, like, I can't hit this horsepower I'm like I know my cars feel faster so what I ended up doing I was just like wait a minute I know the the correction factor adjusts on its own let me look at the actual horsepower right so then when I started going through all my old dynos to the current ones I started looking at like when I first did my dyno there like the horsepower was in like the 180s right and then you can slowly start seeing it go up, you know, 190, 191, 192, 93, and then it gets up to 195 horsepower. But, you know, on these runs where I'm hitting 247 um, horsepower, on my 250 runs, I was hitting um, 190 to 191 um, wheel horsepower, which I was making less, you know, wheel horsepower on those runs. Then I was on these new runs where I'm hitting in the 240s, you know, so I was hitting 247 with um, 195 um, wheel horsepower without corrections. So, like I said, I don't even know what I just said. I'm, I'm so confused. It's so late. But yeah, yeah. Like I was saying, though, it depends on the day. But um, if you're actually going to, like, tune on these dynos, don't go by the corrected number. Go by the actual horsepower you see because the correction changes day to day. So, like, the highest I've seen um, uncorrected was 195. I have to go back and look at all my dynos. I didn't look at all, them all yet, but I know the highest I've saw is 195. And with the 195, with that, you know, that 1.2 something correction, it, that's only 200, maybe 250 wheel horsepower. I won't hit 257.5 unless that correction factor is above 1.3. So um, in between here, I'm gonna kind of show you guys comparisons with the different dynos. And you can kind of see, you know, I, I'll show you <clears throat> my high my high one real quick. And you'll see how on a different day, um, how that correction factor plays a role in what you see as far as um, torque and horsepower right, so here was my dyno i did in march my last one at mofab um after i put my fuel pump in and you can see the torque here um it's 119.885 you know um the correction factor was 1.23 um mofab is about at 5900 feet um in elevation right so i hit you know 1.23 Two three correction factor, and I hit these numbers right. So this is my stock, you know, um, dyno at that almost one fifty four. This isn't the highest dyno for that one or for this one, but this is like you know one of the general what I was seeing on average. So yeah, so one fifty four for stock, right? And then I hit that, and these are a old dyno from almost a year ago, right? So let's go back a little bit earlier. So you see how it says 1.23. So that correction factor is a small, it's a lesser correction for what I made, right? And so then if we go back to um, November, here's one of my dynos from November, um, and it has that newer dyno on there. But um, this isn't the run I wanted to see, but you can see the date on here. Um, November is when I did that um, original dyno where I hit 230, um, 234.9 the correction factor was 1.25 right so if we go to that dyno here it is for that november date so i hit 234 um point or 
5.5 and 2.16 torque, right? So this torque is lower even though the correction factor was 1.25 instead of 1.23, right? So the other one hit 2.19. You'll get it. Got 2.19 over here with a um, lower, cor uh, lower correction factor, as you can see. So it had that 1.23 correction factor and this one has a 1.25 correction factor but the torque was still high on this one so I was heading in the right direction so if I do that 1.25 correction on there I'm pretty sure the horsepower would be exactly the same on both of these right so there's at you know MoFab so the power remained pretty much the same through all of those um, I did pick up some torque and that torque we did pick up um, you know if I do the 1.25 we probably picked up uh, let's say that would have probably been like 222, picked up, you know, eight wheel torque. And I think that was just from the fuel pump, guys. So we go over. So we're done with MoFab. We got one more dyno we're going to do there soon just to see what it is. And then, you know, I got my my high, the highest number I hit um, at Speedy Roo with correction, um, 257.5. But the correction is really high, guys. So um, I know a lot of people com complain about the correction factor. So what I'm trying to do is end this whole debate about that. So we had, you know, 257.5 and 243.4 torque. I was wrong. I thought I said 242. So it's 243 was the maximum. Oh, wait. No, that's, that's crank. So, yeah, 241 on this run. But yes, that is the highest horsepower hit was 257.5. So yeah, this is with correction, it's 241. I was looking at this crank stuff. I didn't want to look at that. So on a different day, um, I don't believe I made any changes um, to the tune. I might have made some minor changes, but um, the correction factor is lower here versus here, right? So the number multiplier is going to be higher so i hit that 257 but as you can see the actual power um was higher without corrections so i did make some power so um this said 250 and this said 257 so i mean there's a real solid four wheel horsepower without corrections so it is you know it's doing its job and yeah the torque is higher that's what i always notice with my tune i always get more torque so these correction factors are pretty similar, right? Um, and I'll show you in a clip here on where I hit more horsepower than this, right? With the actual horsepower, but then my corrected number was lower. It was like 246, 247, and that's because my correction, you know, what it, the multiplier was lower. And it was still, my torque was way higher than this, with even with the lower correction factor, I had more torque than this, and you'll see the number on it. I'm hitting 187 to the wheel without corrections on my new tune. So I'm just like, man, it's it's even without corrections, I'm hitting more torque. So there's something I'm doing right. So that's it, guys. I'll put some pictures in here, but um, we're gonna go compare at um, MoFab and see how the torque compares. And the horsepower compares. And I'm pretty sure they'll have lower. Every time I've gone there, the correction factor has been in the 1.2. Um, but like I said, even with their, this dyno been in the 1.3, it always comes out pretty similar to um, MoFab. So we're going to find out if the Mustang dyno actually reads low or reads high. 